So recently we built our new studio and maker space in Ahmedabad and for our new studio we were looking for some height adjustable table and when we search its price on Amazon well that was close to 50,000 rupees. Man it was damn costly. So our team decided like why not to give it a try and <clears throat> make it by our own. Well initially I was totally against this idea but slowly I got convinced and yeah, yeah let's give it a try. So in this video, you'll be experiencing our journey about how we build our own height adjustable table totally by ourselves. And in the end of the video, we'll be discussing about whether making the table by ourselves was a good idea or not. And also, I'll be discussing about what more features I'm going to add into a DIY version of this table in near future. So you're going to learn a lot out of this single video. So sit back and enjoy our journey of making height adjustable table after this short ad. This video is sponsored by LTM which is a PCB designer based software company. Now if I tell you one very interesting feature of the software then here in LTM designer you can design rigid flex PCB. Now what is that? So till now you must have designed the PCB which has like rigid like solid PCBs if you are not able to bend. But here in LTM you can design a PCB in which some of the parts are rigid solid and some of the parts are flexible which can bend and the PCB can you know uh, we can bend it in a two-fold manner just like the modern day smartphone right. So this is a really very interesting useful and unique feature of the software. Well you can also try out this and many other unique and interesting features of this designer software by just clicking on the link mentioned in the description. Yes by clicking on the link you'll get access to the free trial version of this software. So go ahead try out the free trial version of LTM designer software. So our journey started by visiting the wood warehouse to select the proper and durable wood for our table. After selecting, they processed the wood to make it even from all the four sides. The raw material of the wood cost us around 4000 rupees. So after handing over the wood to the carpenter, we started our search for the linear actuator that we need to move our table up and down. So after researching a bit, we landed up on Robo.in website from where we got this linear actuator that works with 12 volt and having a stroke length of 500 mm that comes around 20 inches. So it can move up to 20 inches above its base height which was okay for our working and shooting purpose. Also this has built in limit switches so that was a plus point. So after going through its specifications, we placed the order for two of them which cost us around 12,000 rupees. And after 7 days, we received this linear actuator and we also did a live unboxing on Instagram. thing that we received that we bought from Robu.in uh, and uh, let's see what it is and uh, let's see if you're able to guess what we are going to make. So yeah, that was the exclusive unboxing and that's why I always say do follow us on Instagram to see such exclusive unboxing and also some of the behind the scenes. Do follow us. Okay, so after receiving them, I realized that these actuators are quite heavy, like 2.5 kg per unit and it's need to be heavy as it is really durable and heavy duty. On the website, it says a single actuator has a self-locking force of 6000 Newton. So yeah, that was all about the specifications of the linear actuator. Now let's just move ahead and see how to use them. So now we already know after reading the specification that this linear actuator will work with 12 volt, but how much current will be enough for this linear actuator well that was not clear so we tried out different uh, power sources so first we tried with a 12 volt 2 ampere power supply and with that power supply the actuator was not working smoothly so then we tried with a 12 volt 5 ampere supply which seems pretty smooth for this actuator and finally we took a 12 volt 10 ampere power supply connected both the motors in parallel with it and both the actuators runs quite smoothly now to test its speed, I kept a stopwatch in between and it took around 1 minute and 45 seconds to completely open the stroke. Now the stroke length was 500 mm and when we divide the stroke length with the time taken, we get the speed around 5 mm per second and that's the exact speed which is mentioned on the specification page as well. So with this, we can easily conclude that the linear actuators are working perfectly and the power supply that we're given is also perfect for these linear actuators. And also by changing the polarity, we can change the direction of movement of the linear actuator. Now as we discussed in the specification that this has a built-in limit switches. Let us test it out. So as you can see, as soon as the stroke of the linear actuator reaches its maximum or minimum position, it automatically cuts off the power supply given to the motor and the actuator stop working. So yeah, the limit switches were perfectly working fine and this is really useful for the safety of the motors. 
So with this, we successfully tested the linear actuators and in the meantime, the carpenter prepared the base structure of the table, which are these two legs of it. And in that, he attached two slider ball bearing channel for each leg for smoother movement of the table. So by preparing two of them, the base legs of the table are ready. After that, he attached a square wooden plates on the top of the leg where our main table top will be sitting. After attaching those plates, now it's the time to attach our linear actuators. So now to attach the linear actuator with the table, we got this small metal clamps which will be connected with the actuator with the help of nuts and bolts. Now the small clamps will help us to easily attach the actuators with the wooden table. Now here at this particular moment, we were confused whether to place the motor at the downside or the upside. If we place it upwards, we need not to extend the wire a lot, but the carpenter said if we place the motor at the bottom, we'll be getting more stability. So in the end, we fix the motor part of the actuator at the bottom and the stroke part at the top by drilling the holes in it and attaching it with the screws. After doing this with the first leg, we tested this unit and it was working as expected. Smooth and stable. And similarly, he did the same thing with the second leg as well. Here I missed to shoot the video of attaching the tabletop and also the support between two legs. But after attaching the tabletop and the support, her table looks something like this. Now here the tabletop part was okay, but I personally find that the table was not that stable. We need to add some more supporting wood in between to make it stable. So the carpenter added two more supporting wood slabs one at the bottom and other at the top and after that we polished the complete table. After that the table was a bit more stable than before. Now in the meantime we are thinking of how and where to attach the control panel cabinet in the table because we need to add some buttons to control the table. So we decided to put it on the left corner part and for that we designed a wooden cabinet. Now here we can place all the circuitry and the power supply unit and it will be easily attached at this part of the table. Now before attaching we drilled a hole in the corner of the cabinet from where all the wires will be passing. And finally with the help of the glue and screws we attach this cabinet and our final table looks like this. Well let me just clean the background. Okay, so this is our height adjustable table. Now here we got all the wooden part of the table polished and also colored the cabinet into the gray color. Looks awesome, isn't it? Now talking about the labor cost for making this particular table, then it came around 15,000 rupees. So after building the structure, now we are left with building the circuitry part of this table and for that, initially we thought to add the ESP32 board and also add some buttons on it just like we used to see in the regular commercial height adjustable table. But what happened, as the opening date was coming closer and closer, we decided to get a double pole double throw switch. So we got this double pole double throw toggle switch from the market and we made the connection of the switch with the power supply and motors something like this. So with this connection, we can easily move the table up and down by toggling the button up and down and even we can stop the motors by moving the shaft of the button in the middle. So this seems a perfect solution as of now for this table. So now to attach this button with the table, we got a black acrylic piece with a hole drill in the middle to attach the button on it. And finally, we put the power supply and button in the cabinet and screwed the acrylic sheet. Now talking about the cable management then, First, we connected both actuators in parallel by using the shadow on the bottom part of the table. After that, we used some cable tie to attach the cable with the actuator. And finally, the wires were passed inside the cabinet where we did all the connections with the power supply. Now here in the cabinet, we need to provide the main AC supply to the actual power supply. And for that, again, we used some shadows to stick the wire on the table. And finally, we attached the plug on the end of the wire, which was inserted inside this extension board. 
Now this extension board is connected via its holder which we purchased from Amazon and it's really really useful because it not only provides the supply to the table but it also has some extra plugs on which we can attach our smartphone, laptop and all other electronic accessories. And finally, we were having only one single wire coming from the table which was of the extension board. And here we come to the end of making part of our own height adjustable table. Now let's just visualize this table in action. So yeah, this is the maximum height of the table and I don't know who will work at this tall position. But yeah, let me make this table a little bit downward. And yeah, this is the perfect height for me to work in a standing posture, okay? So I can stop this table at whatever position I want. Now let's test out the minimum height and let's see if it is comfortable in a sitting posture or not. Okay, so this is the perfect sitting posture for me working on this particular table and this is still not its minimum height. I can even, uh, you know, push this table downwards for uh, other people to get comfortable in sitting posture as well. So yeah, we can, you know, stop this table at any position we want, any position that we are comfortable with. Let us wait for the minimum height. Okay, so this is the minimum height of the table and yeah, it's working pretty fine, pretty smooth. And I'm in love with it. Okay, so here we come to the end of the video and that was all about how to make our own DIY height adjustable table and now comes the important question. Was making this table by our own a good idea or it was better to purchase one. Now, if I ask to give the answer of this question in one line, then it will be, yes, definitely making it our own was a really good idea. Now, if I elaborate this answer, like why it was a good idea, then there are a couple of points. Out of that, the first major point is its cost. So this table cost me around 32 to 33,000 rupees with all the cost included. And it is very, very less than the actual commercially available height adjustable table. So that's the major uh, point which you should consider while making this table. Second point is it's customizable, okay? So as you are making it on your own, it is totally customizable. Now in the video, you have seen that initially it was not that stable. So I added two more wooden slabs to make it more stable and durable. Second thing, I can choose the color of the tabletop as per my choice. I can choose the color of the cabinet. I can choose the buttons. I can choose the actuator, like how much height I want in the actuator. Everything is totally customizable. So that's that you can only get when you are making this particular thing, okay? And the third point is, now, I don't know how many of you can relate this point, but this gives you sense of satisfaction when you make your own thing, which you are going to use it for your entire work life. Okay. So this is that table, which I'm daily using here in the studio. And it feels very like, I feel satisfied when I see this particular thing, which is built by our team. Okay. So that sense of satisfaction you will get. And fourth point is going to learn a lot out of this particular thing because while making everything from scratch, you face a lot of problems, difficulties, errors, everything. So you're going to learn a lot while making one thing by your own. Okay. So these are the points, uh, uh, considering which I can say that yes, making it by own was a very good idea. Thank you so much team Techie SMS for supporting me, for motivating me and for making this particular thing a reality. Okay. Now let's move ahead and uh, let's discuss like what improvements I'm going to add in near future in this particular table. First of all, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to do it or not, but I'm thinking uh, of it as of now, which is I will be adding the buttons and the ESP32 chip inside this particular thing to make it a uh, control using a remote as well. So I can make a ESP now based remote and I can control this table uh, wirelessly using the remote. Okay. So ESP32 circuit and buttons 
is one thing which I'm going to add in future. Second thing, which is really very important and that feature I find in the commercially available product. And that feature is called as anti-collision sensor. Now, what is that? So what happens whenever we are like moving this table up and down and if any things interrupt in the movement, the table stops at that particular position because of the anti-collision sensor, okay? And those sensors can be proved really, really helpful to stop unwanted damages of the objects that are, you know, uh, interrupting the movement of the table. Okay. In my case, it is not that because I haven't added any sensor in it. So if it is going down, no matter how much pressure you give, it will go down and down only. Okay. So that is one thing which I'm going to add into this table. How and why I really don't know as of now I need to do research on this particular sensor. So I'm going to research it, learn it, how to use it and install it in this particular table. Okay. So these are something which I'm going to add in this particular table in near future. So make sure to follow us on uh, YouTube as well as Instagram to stay updated with all the latest update okay okay so yeah that was it about this video now this was the very first time i tried this kind of like a long journey project based video so do let me know in the comments was this video interesting useful did you gain some knowledge from this video do let me know your valuable feedback down in the comments of the video and this kind of videos like there are many more these kind of videos coming up because here in this new studio i installed so many things like this like i installed a smart mirror like it's under process i installed the rfid based tow lock system i installed uh, the totally studio is controlled using alexa so i installed all the things here okay so there are so many different different long journey based projects are coming up on youtube so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out any of the projects just installed in the studio and yeah that being said I'm just ending this video here and now just wait for my next video to explore, learn, share with me, Techie SMS.